Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you're finding us for that very first time, you know, welcome. It's good to have you. And our topic for y'all today is six factors to consider before buying a gym. Six factors to consider before buying a gym. Now, before we get into our topic here today, you know, just a quick reminder, you know, my focus, my mission, you know, here on the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can, you know, to as many people as I can, you know, across the globe. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel. So if you've not yet done so, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. And then to learn more about me, learn more about my company and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And then for you folks who are looking to open a new gym and you need funding, maybe you're looking to acquire a gym, you need funding. Maybe you're an existing owner, you need some working capital. You know, we can help provide funding between fifty and four hundred thousand dollars that is unsecured. There's no restrictions on use. And the basic qualification for the program, it's a six eighty credit score or better in all three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and then a minimum income of 50000 per year each of the two previous years. Check the links below under financing and funding you know, for additional information on that program, as well as other financing options that we have available for you as well. And so with that said, let's jump into our topic here today, and it's six factors to consider before buying a gym. And I know this is, you know, big topic. People are out looking, they're acquiring facilities and we want to make sure we do it right. Okay. I want to give you some things to think about. And uh, if you're not familiar, you can check the links below. We have a full broker, buy, sell broker division. Uh, if you're looking for valuations of the business, if you need representation, you know, we can help you with that. So you can check the links below, but six factors to consider before buying a gym. So number one is the timing, right? Is the timing, right? Now, let me tell you a, a couple things on timing, the way I look at this, okay? And, you know, if you're going through, you know, if there's, you know, difficult economic times, there's world issues, and a lot of people are contracting, this can be a great time to buy because one of the solutions, one of the answers for folks that are really good at this is they will advance and expand into the market. So sometimes difficult times means the timing is right, okay? If we're going to advance and expand into the markets. That's one way to look at the timing. The other way to look at it is the timing right for you. Now, how are you gonna run this? Are you gonna run it yourself? Do you have to hire somebody? you have to train somebody? Is there somebody there? Can you supervise it? You know, do you have the time to put into this? Is the timing right? You know, I wouldn't necessarily do a deal just to do the deal uh, if I couldn't do what needed to be done. Can I market it? You know, can I do all the things you know, that need to be done? So is the timing right number two are there issues with the company's books you know take a look at the company's books okay and you want to look at you know you know financial information p l statements and the like okay you want to look at bank statements you want to look at tax returns you know we want to see how much money is going into the bank but also you know, really do an evaluation of this uh, to give you an example. You know, say for example, you're looking at some year-end numbers, okay, and not bad. And then you're looking at first quarter numbers of the following year, and there's been a big drop-off. Okay, uh, you know, any issues with the company's books? Okay, now we want to make sure that it's all on the up and up. But did a new new competitor come in and drove the numbers down? Did a uh, key employee quit? Uh, did they lose a key corporate account? You know, what happened here? Okay, you know, issue with the company's books, you can look at some of that and see. But then also you want to be able to verify, you know, anything that they're backing out as far as kind of owner's discretionary expenses and things of that nature. I really do a line item search on that. But most importantly, I'd say is make sure you know, what the, the financial statements are saying match up with tax returns and bank statements as far as money coming in. Uh, you know, any cash that's not seeing the bank doesn't count. Um, number three on my list, uh, the company's reputation in the community. Okay, you know, the goodwill part of this, right? And so what do their reviews look like? Look at Google, look at Facebook, look at Yelp, you know, perhaps even LinkedIn, other places. You know, what is the company's reputation in the community? 
of all the things to fix, that could be a little more challenging than others, okay? And that could drive the price down, okay? If the reputation is not a good one, people are saying bad things, you know, maybe a, an under new ownership, you know, banner will help fix a lot of that. But, you know, what is that company's reputation? Because ideally, you want something that's, you know, solid and, and good. Number four, potential for growth. What is the potential for growth? Now, I can say this, for most clubs that I get a chance to analyze from that broker perspective, most clubs that are being bought, most of them have decent room for growth because, you know, they've done well in a lot of cases because it's a good industry to be in, okay? They haven't necessarily done well because their marketing was good, uh, their sales process was good, uh, their follow-up was good, uh, their attrition, their retention strategies were good. Normally, there's a lot of things in there you can look at where you can see some growth. You know, personal training penetration, you know, getting more money per customer. There's a lot you can look at in there, potential for growth. Now, when you're buying it, when you're valuing this, don't value it on the potential for growth. Just know, hey, here's where some opportunities are going to lie for you, um, you know, should you take this over. Number five. Why is the seller leaving? Why do they want to sell? Okay. And there can be legitimate reasons, you know, that somebody wanted to sell. They're ready to move on. You know, maybe they're ready to retire. Maybe they just want to, you know, take their money off the table. Okay. Sometimes new competition came in. Maybe numbers are declining. Maybe the owner is aware of new construction is going to shut off that main road going right in front of the gym. I've seen it happen. Okay. And so, to the extent that you're able to, you really want to find out, you know, why is that seller leaving? Okay. It may not be for the reasons that you want it to be. And if it, if, if it is for reasons that, you know, construction or other things that are happening, you know, that could change the price of it and the value of it for you. Right. And then number six on six factors to consider before buying a gym, is it worth the price? Is it worth the price? Now, here's what I see across the board. The number one reason, that gyms do not sell is they are overpriced. The owner puts too much value or puts value on blood, sweat, and tears. There's value on cash flow. Investors want cash flow. That's what you want. That's ultimately what you're paying for. Okay, unless it's a fire sale and you're buying assets, right? But you're buying cash flow. Is it worth the price? Okay, get a valuation on this. This is something we can help with or you know, find someone that can help you with that get a valuation so you know what it is. Probably 50 to 75% of all listings never sell because they're overpriced. Okay. And then maybe by the time they bring the price down, they've already kind of weeded through, you know, that interested, uh, that interested audience. So is it worth the price? Don't go in there and overpay. I mean, there's an old adage in business. You don't make your money when you sell it. You make your money when you buy it. You know, if you overpay, you know, that could lead to problems down the road for you. So really, you know, make sure you're, you're well aware of kind of the value of this thing. And if it's an asset sale, you know, looking at, you know, recurring fees and equipment, most likely would not have a lot of value in there. You know, are there a lot of prepaid contracts in there that need to be backed out in terms of the cash price. So there are some things to look at there. So is it worth the price? So six factors to consider. So if you're looking to buy a gym, which, I recommend. I think it's a great industry to be in. You, you buy it right, it'd be a nice situation for you. Take a look at these things, see if they can help you. Also, check out our blog you know, on our website, numerous articles on things to look at and, and things to consider in that regard. So folks, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting, and I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And if you've not yet done so, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And then again, to learn more about me, learn more about my company, and how we can help take your business to that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And then for you folks that are looking to open a new gym, you need funding, you're looking to acquire a new gym, you need funding, you're an existing owner, might need some working capital, you know, we can help provide funding from between 50000 up to 400000 that is unsecured. There's no restrictions on use. Um, basic qualification for that program is a 680 or better credit score in all three credit bureaus. Minimum income of 50000 per year each of the two previous years. And you, know, you can check out the links below under uh, financing and funding for more information on that program, as well as other uh, financing options we have available for you. So again, appreciate you being here on the channel today, and we look forward to seeing you on that next session.